Hi everyone. In today's video, I'm going to show how to get absolutely stunning cells within your fluid art piece. So let's get started. I've already mixed my base layer here, the white, and then I have a nice taupe, a beautiful deep burgundy, a cream, and a light aqua blue. For our last color here, I'm going to show the whole process. I have this cup filled about halfway with US Floetrol, but I do find that Aussie Floetrol gives a lot better cells, but it's really expensive. So a cheap alternative is to add in some pre-stain wood conditioner. So that's trick number one to get more cells in your fluid art piece. To make all four of these colors here, I used these five acrylic paints. They are by Liquitex along with some white and black. If you take a look at our color palette here, so far we have three light colors and only one dark color with the burgundy in the back. I do find that having a good contrast of very light and dark colors will help all the cells pop on your canvas. So we need another darker shade. For that, we're gonna go with this dark Prussian blue. So it's a blue with some more red undertones, almost making it a purple. That will balance out our light colors, and also it goes great with that burgundy. I added in a splash of water, and we will mix it up and see how the consistency is doing. And I really don't measure out the flow trowel or conditioner or water or paint. I go based off of consistency. I cannot stress enough how important the paint mixture consistency is to achieving perfect cells. So I roughly add about half flow trowel, half acrylic paint, and then I add small amounts of water at a time until I get that perfect consistency. I'm gonna add in a little more of the conditioner as well. It's quite thin, so it'll work like the water to thin it out to what we need. So to do a consistency check, what you need to do is lift up your mixing stick and let the paint drip down onto the rest of the paint in the cup. You should see the pattern on top of the paint, but it should quickly disappear. That is your perfect consistency. Now I'm gonna quickly show you why the consistency of these mixtures is so important. If you made these mixtures too thick, it's gonna pour on and look great. But when it dries, it's gonna crack. This piece looks amazing from far away, but if you look close up, especially at the top here, it was too thick and it cracked. Luckily, I'll still be able to save this piece. It is gorgeous. All I need to do is apply a resin top coat that will hide all the texture and cracks and it's gonna look great. So at least that one's not completely ruined. This one, on the other hand, I was testing out a new pouring medium. It was much too thin, and you can see the results here. No defined cells, no defined lines. Clearly, the black was much too thin, and it's overpowered the whole canvas. And unfortunately, there's no saving this one, so I'm going to have to just pour over it. You really want to make sure it's the perfect consistency. I'll show you with the lighter color here. You can see it a bit better. Lift it up. It drips down, we can see the pattern disappears quickly. That is what you're aiming for. These are good to go. So our next step is going to be to add in some cell activators. Starting off, I have this spray bottle filled with some 99% isopropyl alcohol. I'm gonna put two sprays in each mixture. I'm adding in this first because I do wanna mix it well. I find that isopropyl alcohol not only helps create some cells, but it also gets rid of a lot of those tiny little air bubbles. So I'm gonna mix all these up and we will get to our next step. Isopropyl alcohol is all mixed in. Now we're gonna add in some more cell activators. To start off, I have some Rain-X. So Rain-X is a water repellent. And since it's hydrophobic, it will help create some beautiful cells. I'm only going to add it to our light blue color. With the Rain-X, I find you get these very unique, very defined, tiny little cells. 
So I think that will look nice with our nice aqua blue here. So we're only adding it to that and that will create some small cells. Now we want to get some bigger cells into the mix. So we're going in with my favorite cell activator, silicone oil. It is 100% silicone oil. It's by Montmart. But honestly, I find any brand, as long as it's 100% silicone oil, it's going to work great. So the difference here is I'm not mixing it in heavily. That is a very important step if you want big cells. So I'm just tapping down the silicone oil. I put two drops in the four mixtures, not in the blue, not in the base. And that's it. That will give us some big cells. All right, let's get to pouring. I've applied my base layer to the canvas already. And since I did add in that isopropyl alcohol, I barely have any air bubbles. This is also quite a large canvas. Well, at least for me, it is 16 by 20 inches. For this method I'm using to get cells, I do prefer a slightly larger canvas. I'm gonna be quickly swiping the acrylic paint mixtures across the canvas. So the longer it is, the faster I can swipe and the speed of which you pour does affect the amount of cells you get. If I were going to be doing an open cup pour, which I've done in my previous cell videos, I prefer to use a smaller square canvas like this 12 by 12. That way you don't have to spread it around the canvas too much and warp those cells. But since we're doing a line pour here, it's going to help to have more space to swipe that paint. Before we get to the swipe, I'm just going to spritz the canvas with a few sprays of the isopropyl alcohol. That should help with cells even more. And again, get rid of any of those tiny little air bubbles. Now for the fun part, pouring out our mixtures. I've layered them all in two cups here. And you can see I'm just doing a straight line pour. The faster you pour, the more cells you will get. And you can see I've left room around all edges of the canvas. I'm focusing mainly on the center. I will spread it out further, but it won't be pouring off the edges soon as I pour. That will help keep the cells nice and defined. On to our second cup here. And you can see the faster I pour, the more cells appear. I do like to get a good mixture, some areas being heavily celled, some not so much, and then throw in some nice little thin lines. We have both cups poured out. So the next step, I'm just taking my torch here and lightly torching the top. It will activate any little cells looking to come up. It will also get rid of those air bubbles. But please be cautious if you are using isopropyl alcohol. That is a torch, so alcohol is flammable. I still do it and I've yet to cause any fires. But if you want to avoid any issues, just use the alcohol and forego the torch. Or maybe use a heat gun. But I'm still going to use both and I'm just very careful with it. Now we're going to spread it across the rest of the canvas. And this part usually gives me a lot of anxiety. The cells look so great and you start to see them warp as you pour over the edges. So just be mindful to go nice and slow. You have a bit more control as to the shape of the cells and how the canvas piece looks. And as the paint spreads, you do see more and more cells appear. So I'm just very carefully covering every edge while also being mindful not to pour off a lot of it or lose some of these gorgeous cells. After I have all four corners covered, I like to pull the paint back into the center. That will help any cells that were getting very stretched to reform their nice round shapes. So just a few adjustments, making sure it looks exactly as I want. And I am happy with that. I'm just going to do a little edge check. 
often the paint doesn't pour over the edges. So just dabbing it with your gloved hand, blending in that paint so you don't have any of that white canvas peeking through. Unless, of course, you like having a little bit of exposed canvas. I recently found out that Van Gogh's Starry Night, the stars are actually blank canvas. So if you want to leave it, go for it. But it drives me nuts to see those little exposed canvas pieces. So blended it all in. And there we go. And lastly, some final touches that will really help just make these cells pop even more. Starting with my handy torch. And next, I'm going to use the alcohol, not in that reverse order. Flame first, alcohol second. So I find by spritzing the alcohol right on top of the canvas, especially in pieces like this blue corner here where there's not a lot of cells, it activates a lot of little tiny baby cells. And even better than isopropyl alcohol to get those little cells is Rain-X. I'm just spraying it on this corner here and this corner here where it's only beige. <laughs> and it might take a couple minutes for some of the cells to appear. All right, so that is it. Here is the freshly poured piece. We have some big cells, some little cells, some cells within cells. Now we just have to see how it dries. And here we have it. I have yet to apply a top coat. I'm debating between a varnish or a resin top coat that will bring back some of the vibrancy. But I only poured this piece a couple days ago, so I'm going to give it two weeks to fully, fully cure so that I can wipe any silicone residue off with some isopropyl alcohol before applying that top coat. Waiting that couple of weeks will help ensure that the isopropyl alcohol wipe doesn't remove any of the paint. So that's it, guys. The piece is complete, minus the top coat. Let me know if you think it would look better with resin or varnish. That's all for today's video, and I will see you next time. Thanks for watching. Bye.